Hello YouTube world, Mac Daddy 1911 one here with the Shade Tree Survivalists. What you're looking at here is some of the tools I used to dig around the yard and uh, the rebuilt GI type entrenching tool, which I found out it was made in uh, Taiwan, so it's probably not the real deal, but it works really well. And you'll also see what I've always commonly called a grubbing hoe which the manufacturer calls this a uh, where in the hell did it get off pick matic pickaxe basically and you've got two different types of shovels here you've got a, the standard round point and you've got the other standard square point shovel each has its advantages and disadvantages uh, for digging um, but this will be basically part one of uh, digging in uh, digging a fighting position, a foxhole slit trench, or a prepared fighting position. And I wanted to just show you some of the tools and explain a little bit about them. This is very portable. It does a fairly decent job, but it is it has a very short handle and it will wear you the hell out. And it's just not a very efficient tool in my opinion. As I stated in the video, um, the that piece of damn junk, the tech sport folding shovel. I worked at a funeral home and dug graves for uh, about two years. Now, most of those graves, we used a little Kubota backhoe that did a fine job, but you still had to clean out the, the corners and so forth. But we also built monuments, coping lots, set headstones in the base, as well as the slabs and so forth. And we did a lot of digging with shovels. And there were a few places you could not get the tractor into because of the tight quarters. They were very old cemeteries. And when they were laid out, it was back in the horse and buggy days and they didn't even, the backhoe had not even been invented yet. So we had to go in and dig them by hand. And I'll promise you this, that is not something I would like to do. Um, your basic foxhole, as I, I've seen it laid out by a couple of former Marines and uh, soldiers on YouTube here, are three feet by six feet. Three feet wide by six feet long and they, rel they basically come up to your chest area. Um, the part that you actually dig out and then you take your dirt and put it on the outside to, to uh, raise the sides of it, of course. Um, and like I said, this is a adequate digging implement but it is not a superior digging implement and depending on what you're going to be digging the standard round point shovel with long handle beats it hands down and if you're going to be digging anywhere there's going to be big rocks and uh, roots and so forth one of these pickmatics or pickaxe will beat anything else you can come up with hands down it's great for stripping grass off the dirt it's good for chopping it up and making it easier to, to dig with the shovel to get out of the hole with the shovel and of course you've got the big pick on the end that bust up big rocks and rip smaller roots and so forth um, but a standard shovel is probably at least twice as big so you can get twice as much dirt out of the way now this one here has a lot of wear on it all right and it's an inexpensive shovel whether you use a fiberglass handle or whether you use a wooden handle does not really matter um, you can break them all i have broken them and these here are the inexpensive versions and but my brother who is uh in the union he's a plumber and a master pipe fitter he uh he buys the high-end ones and we've broken them too. It just depends on how you use them. I try not to, but sometimes you think you've got that root and you can pop it with the shovel and uh, snap it. And it turns out the shovel gives up the ghost before the damn root does. That's where one of these babies come in handy. Um, but I wanted to show you the tools of the trade, so to speak. This, this are, are your means of digging most holes uh, trenches, uh, if you're going to lay, lay electrical cable in conduit or without, um, if you're going to lay pipe, uh, you're going to dig a fighting position, these two here would be my first choices, um, hands down, simple as that. The square point shovel is good for flattening out the bottoms, cleaning up the sides and making them flush, I mean, you know, square, um, but as far as digging, it ain't worth a damn. <laughs> 
because that wide front just will not sink into the dirt unless it's very, very uh, easy to dig dirt, you know, really sandy conditions or whatever the case may be. Um, so those are the tools. Okay. Part two will involve the your uh, footwear, okay? You try digging a hole with one of these implements here and, and kicking a shovel down and cutting through, you know, the minor roots and so forth, kicking it with a pair of tennis shoes or some of these damn newfangled boots that the U.S. military is using that look like a tennis shoe with a boot upper, you are asking for a stress fracture or a very bad sprain in your actual, in your foot, not just your ankle, but in your foot. If you're going to do any serious digging, such as fighting positions and so forth, in unprepared ground that has never been cut into by a shovel before, like in the forest, on a mountaintop, whatever the case may be, and you do not have proper heavy-duty boots, you are going to be a casualty. Simple as that. Now, for everyday wear, I just have a pair of good Georgia boots. They're not the prettiest damn thing in the world, but they are very heavy-duty, and they have a steel shank in the so to protect your foot while you're kicking the hell out of the damn shovel and they are high and i keep them laced up tight to protect help protect my ankles i also have a very nice heavy duty work boot insole in them to make them uh, comfortable you do not have to get them with a leg lug tread like this the lug tread really captures dirt and crap and you'll track it in the house and i'm always getting fussed at by chemo, but being I do most of the vacuum, she really can't raise too much hell. But if you're gonna do digging, serious digging, whether it be in your yard, you're, you're fixing to put in an electrical line to your shop, or you're laying a water line, or whatever the case may be, buy a good heavy duty pair of work boots or heavy duty military boots with the steel shank that will um, keep the uh, sole from collapsing and breaking down because I have had pairs of cheap boots in the past and kicked the hell out of a shovel and instantly felt the sole of the boot give way and they wasn't worth a shit after that. Uh, if I'd have kept using them, I probably would have sustained an injury. So no tennis shoes, no flip-flops, chemo. Use heavy duty work boots or heavy duty military boots designed to protect your feet. Those damn newfangled combat shoe boots are not worth a damn for this because they don't have the thick, heavy sole or the steel shank reinforcement to protect your feet from the pounding that they're going to take when you're trying to drive a shovel into the ground. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I almost forgot one more thing. I hope I'm able to edit this in correctly, but Another thing about the boot, it protects your feet from the shock and the trauma of stomping on the shovel and so forth, but it also can protect your feet if you miss your intended target with your grubbing hoe slash your pick-o-matic, all right, your uh, pickaxe. Um, to a lesser degree, it can protect your feet against a machete strike in case you miss with a machete and it hits your foot. An axe, you're pretty much screwed, all right? But the idea is to wear a heavy enough uh, footwear that's strong enough, that's designed to protect your feet against this type of abuse, and believe me, you're going to need it. Especially those heavy-duty insoles, the steel shank, and a really thick, heavy-duty sole on. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing you need to do is, like any other kind of project, have a basic idea and plan in your head how you intend on doing it. And then start executing it one step at a time so you're not wasting a bunch of damn energy, okay? And first, I'm, I did some time lapse when I was pulling up some, some of these damn wild hedges here and moving sticks and cutting down limbs and all that. I rolled that in, and now I'm going to show you the basics of using a shovel to start off with, and then I'll roll in the uh, some more time lapse video to show you the progress so it doesn't bore you slap to tears. First thing I'm gonna do though, and I don't know how well because of the brush in between me and it, I'm gonna clear off the dead leaves and so forth to get down to the dirt, and I'm just gonna use this basically as a rake from the side and rake it out of the way.
That is massive rock. I'm going to save those. Okay, we got the majority of the uh, straw and the dead grass, I mean, uh, the, the leaves and so forth out of the way. Now I'm going to uh, move the camera and show you guys the basics of how to use a shovel efficiently. This ground has never been cut with a shovel that I know of. Um, been here about six years, I guess, now with me and Kimo. And I've never uh, cut anything out here in the ground so it's it's probably just loaded with roots and so forth um of course you know i mean it's it's pretty much knowledge that you're going to kick the shovel to drive it into the ground okay that's the reason for the heavy duty boots um if you want to make a straight cut to get it as, as straight as possible you have to lean the shovel out to get the blade vertical so when you you know you jump down on it it's going to make a straight down cut as possible. Otherwise, your sides will be in at an angle and your hole will be that much narrower if you're digging like a trench for a piece of pipe or whatever. But when you kick in a shovel, I mean, if you're not worried about the straight sides, you kick in the shovel. What I always do is go around cutting it all the way around to get rid of the roots. And I let it overlap at the sides a little bit so you ensure that you cut the roots. Now there's always some roots at the bottom. You might have to angle it under there to get those. And it comes right out. Alright, now look. See that? That is a layer of roots. Okay? Holds together real well. Grass is the same damn way. If you do it right, it'll hold together and you can take your grass, you can lay it off to the side, and then you can go back and use it to cover the top of it if you put overhead protection. Now I'm gonna do time-lapse video again. Decided to take a break. I got quite a bit dug out, but the camera just doesn't do it justice, I don't think. What a great cardiovascular workout. For now, we're just digging a foxhole, and we're leaving one side open, the side that's closest to our egress route, and uh, just building up the dirt around it. We're going to push it out away from the hole after we're done, but damn what a hole damn what a task hope you guys hit like and subscribe a lot or like and share or something a lot on this video because man this is some damn work thank god it's only about 60 freaking degrees for 65 out here today i'd be dead by now but so far that's what we got 
Damn battery's gonna about, about to die on me, so I'm gonna go take the camera inside and charge it and take a break. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> I'm probably eight or 10 feet away from it. Man, I've been wore, I'm wore out. I've already been uh, push mowed the rest of the front yard up that big damn hill. And of course dug this much and other things around and about the house today, washing clothes and this, that, and the other. But that's what we've got so far. Let me see. Back the camera off a bit. Change the angle. And I'll crawl in it and let you see how deep it is. Well, it's just a touch over my knee at this point right here. And at this end, I haven't removed as much dirt. So that's what we've got. I mean, but you could kneel in here and fire so I guess, I don't know if you consider this a slit trench or not, but this is what we've got so far. And I'll do a little digging, just plain recording, and let you guys hear the crunches of all the damn rocks. I've never seen so many rocks in my damn life. It's like there's gravel in the ground. And some of them are substantial. Some of them are substantial. And uh, where I'm from in South Georgia, it's mostly sand, okay? At one time or another, it was the bottom of the sea floor, but now it is not. But anywho, let's get her done. Found another rock. Oh, man. You guys, it was the time lapse is so fast that you probably couldn't even tell when I use this damn thing, but I use this a lot. You hear all the rocks. It hitting the rocks is it's ridiculous. Boy, it's a hell of a workout, I promise you. And I was saying about them heavy duty boots, you'd already be in a hurt locker if you hadn't had if I didn't have them on. I'd already be in a hurt locker.
Christmas. enough for today. I guess done too damn much and wore out. One week I'll be 44 years old. The simple fact that I'm able to do this at all is a miracle. Whew, but you get the idea. Um, another rock. See, it's hard. It's hard digging out here. But we've got a lot to do to finish it just as a foxhole and then once we're done that we've done that we're going to uh, get some sandbags hopefully and build a proper fighting position with overhead cover y'all stay tuned <laughs> 